Hi, I'm Rhiannon from the Epsom Bakehouse and today we'll be discussing just how long should it take for your dough to rise when you're baking bread. If you've been enjoying these bread making tips and you'd like to know more, you can sign up for my top five bread making tips via the link below this video. You'll get everything from how-to videos to blogs and more to answer your questions about baking bread. So in one of my online classes, I was recently asked what are the key mistakes that people make when they're baking bread? And this is probably one of them that not letting your dough rise for long enough will affect the final bread that you bake. So just how long should you let your dough rise? So let's just start by talking a little bit more about what's actually happening when your dough is rising. A little bit like the dough I've got here in my bowl. When your dough is rising, the yeast that you've put into your bread dough is getting to work, breaking down the starches in the flour and digesting those into sugars and organic acids. And then the yeast is starting to feed on the sugars and produce gas, carbon dioxide, which is what rises your dough. So letting your dough rise for long enough is a really important step when you're baking bread, as it allows your dough to fill out with gas and making for that light fluffy crumb or the inside of your finished loaf, which you're probably aiming for, and also to add flavor to your finished bread. So it's an important thing to give some time to. So if it's that important to give time to, exactly how long should you be letting your dough rise for? Well, unfortunately, that is something that actually will be based on two factors. Firstly, the temperature at which your dough is rising, and secondly, the amount of yeast that you've put into your dough. And those things will actually differ between every bread you bake. You won't always weigh out exactly the same amount of yeast, or you may switch and use something like a sourdough starter, which has much less yeast in it. Also, the temperature will often change in your kitchen. For example, according to the seasons, or maybe you have your uh, heating on, or it's just a bright sunny day and it's very warm. So if you add more yeast, it does stand to reason that they'll digest the flour more quickly and uh, produce more gas more quickly. So you might think, why don't I just get this over and done with and put in lots of yeast and my bread dough will rise really quickly. Well, it might rise quickly, but you won't produce much flavor and you might end up with a bit of a yeasty taste in your final bread. So it's actually better to give your bread dough more time. You might also hear about proving your dough or rising your dough in a warm place. Yes, the temperature, if it's, if it's a warmer temperature, will um, speed up the action of the yeast up to about 37 degrees centigrade, after which they actually slow down and start to die. So you could put your dough in a warmer place, especially if it's, for example, in winter or the temperature is just a lot colder in your kitchen normally. But it's absolutely not necessary. Your dough will still rise, your yeast will still work at a lower temperature. They will just take longer to do it. So bear in mind, whenever you're baking bread, those two factors, how much yeast you're putting in and the temperature of your dough and the surroundings in which your um, dough is rising. Think about how those factors might affect the time that it will take for your dough to rise properly. If your kitchen is at about 20 degrees centigrade and you've added in 1% of yeast to the weight of flour, so for example, five grams of dried yeast in 500 grams of flour, I would say you would need to leave um, after the first, um, when you first kneaded your dough together, you'll need to leave it to rise for at least an hour, an hour and a half, but probably up to two hours. Really give time for your dough to fill out with gas and to collect all that flavour. You can actually test if your dough is uh, risen enough um, by flouring a finger and poking it into the dough. If you take your finger out and the indentation remains, your dough has probably risen really well. If your finger kind of bounces back or your dough still feels really solid, then you need to give it more time to rise. Or you, if it's been quite a long time, you might want to check that your yeast is active. So those are some top tips on how long should you leave your dough to rise when you're baking bread. Just bear in mind that two factors, how much yeast you put in and the temperature of the dough and the surroundings will have an effect on how long your dough takes to rise. So give your dough time, especially if you're using less yeast and it's colder. If you've got any other questions about leaving your dough to rise, or on any other bread making issue, then leave a comment on this video and I'll be sure to get back to you. And as mentioned at the top of this video, if you're enjoying these tips and you'd like to hear more from me about breaking your own great bread at home and top tips for that, you can sign up for my top five bread making tips via the link below this video. I look forward to chatting again more about baking great bread at home. Otherwise I'll say bye for now and speak again soon.